Hey, what's going on? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we're going to talk about staggered versus flat top pole pieces in your pickups. Uh, for example, this Stratocaster right here. This is a mid 80s Stratocaster pickup and they're flat across the top. Why are they not staggered? Why were some years of Fender guitars, especially, staggered where they have this, you know, Thing coming up there and maybe the g strings a little higher and some other strings were a little higher and it's a weird pattern too right so why is that the case and why did we go from flat in the early broadcaster no caster area to staggered in the mid 60s and then back to flat that's an interesting question too here we go with some history well first of all uh the reason there's let's talk about why they're staggered first uh there's two main reasons one is because we need to balance output between the strings. We'll get to that in a minute. First, we're going to talk about fretboard radius. As you may have noticed when you play your guitar, uh, the fretboard is not all the way flat. It's actually a cylinder. And the radius refers to, if you were to take that, if you were to look down your neck and you were to see that radius, okay, and then draw that into a whole circle, the radius of that circle would be whatever the number of the radius of your fretboard is. So early fretboards were 7.25 inch radius fretboards, seven and a quarter inch radius. And they, so they were very steep, right? Like very round. Modern fretboards are a lot of times 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches. Some kind of shreddy guitars are like 16 to 20 inches, almost totally flat. So if you were to take that section of um, the fretboard and then turn it into a whole big circle, the radius of that circle would be 20 inches instead of seven and a quarter inches. So what that means is in the middle of the fretboard, the strings are way higher than they are on the sides. So we make the string, the magnets, we that's what happened they made the magnets stick up in the middle and less on the sides so you had staggered pole pieces which you're like wait a minute why didn't they do that from the beginning because telecasters uh early ones no casters and broadcasters for example were flat this is because these pickups were not actually telecaster pickups they were adapted from so this is leo fender again not caring really about tone as much as adapting what he already had into a new technology those pickups came from lap steels lap steels don't have any radius they're like i don't know if they don't have any radius but they're super super flat so there's no need for staggered pull pieces so you take a lap steel bridge pickup you adapt it to a guitar and then all of a sudden you have a radius and you go oh wait a minute i need to add a radius to those pickup pull pieces too so you put the staggered pole pieces in there. But then you're like, wait a minute. <clears throat> this doesn't make sense. Because I've seen those staggered pole pieces and they're not round. They're like jaggedy, like zigzaggy weird, right? So let's take a look at them. So here we have a set of, this is kind of like a graphic representation pretty much of what your 60s, staggered fender pull piece looks like okay now you notice that it's not like we talked about it's not round like a fretboard so even though the strings are at a constant radius the pickup pull pieces are not at that same constant radius and you can kind of see where it, it's sort of compensated it kind of makes sense right like um, it kind of goes up towards the middle and then it drops back off but what's this weird zigzaggy deal let's figure that out in order to figure this part out, we need to think about string technology back then, okay? Nowadays, uh, most people, most guitar strings are either steel or nickel-plated steel, which means that the windings and the core are all steel of some sort. And as we know, the magnets, the magnetic field, the string vibrating in the magnetic field is what makes the electrical impulse that turns us into electric guitar music. The thing is, is that early strings were not steel all the way out. So if we look at the construction of a guitar string, I just ripped this one apart earlier today, you can see the winding wrapped around the steel core. 
earlier guitar strings, in fact, you can still get them this way today, don't have any steel. They have nickel wrapped around the outside of the steel core. Nickel does not have the same ferromagnetic properties that steel does. It's not, it's hardly magnetic at all. It really isn't magnetic at all. So you're relying on the diameter of the core of the string to vibrate within that magnetic field. You're not using the whole string. Back in the day when you're using just a nickel string, not a nickel plated steel or a steel string. Okay. Again, this is an adaptation. So number one, the material. Number two, in the earlier guitars, electric guitars weren't a thing. We were adapting strings to an electric guitar. So now we have this nickel strings, these nickel strings that are the cores are the only steel part. And then we also have the fact that the G string is wound back then and not steel, plain steel like it is today. You can still get a wound G. In fact, like most acoustic guitars have wound Gs, right? And you can get wound G sets for electric guitars, but if we want to bend a lot, and G is like a string that we want to bend a lot, uh, we don't want winding on it. We want it to be plain. But you're like, wait a minute. This still doesn't make sense because those pull pieces just don't make sense to me because they ramp up from the low E, A, and the D. They get really tall for the G, but the G was wound, not plain. That doesn't make sense. Well, here's an interesting thing. Remember that we're dealing with the magnetic properties of the core of the string when we're talking about nickel wound strings back then. So in order to set our pole piece heights, we need to look at the core diameters of each string. Typically, a wound string, the core is like 35 to 55% of the entire diameter of the string. So for example, these Ernie Ball 10 to 46s that I've got that I put on everything, okay? If we, I physically measured these strings. So if we rip the winding off and we measure just the core itself, these are the numbers that we came up with. The low E, the core diameter was 17. The A was 15. The D was 13. Now that makes sense, right? So you've got a big string and as it gets smaller, the core gets a little bit smaller. It makes sense. But here's the weird part. Because of that 35 to 55% of the diameter of the string being the core, to get a 17 G string, we have to dip all the way down to like a 10. So inside that 17 G is a 10 steel core in order to have the overall diameter of a 17. And then your steel strings make sense. Your B is a 13 and your E is a 10, right? But because the steel core of that G string had to be so much smaller in relation to the B and the E that are right next to it, that G string magnet had to be pushed way up. Because remember, we're dealing with the magnetic properties of the core of the string, not the whole diameter of the string. Wild, right? So now, these days, we're running nine and a half, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20 inch di uh, radius fretboards, so a lot flatter. So we don't really even need this whole staggered thing. We're running no wound G string, right? So the diameter of the steel is the diameter of the string. And we're running nickel plated steel. So now the winding of the string on the outside of it also plays into the magnetic field way more than a nickel string does. So what's best for you? Well, there's a couple of questions. When you're thinking about, should I have a flat set of pickups like this one right here, or should I order staggered pull pieces? Well, there's a couple of things we could talk about with that. Obviously, one is if you run a flatter fretboard radius, my favorite is a 10 or a 12, there's really no need for me to use a staggered pull piece, number one. Number two, if you're using nickel plated steel or steel strings, there's really no need to use a staggered pull piece because the magnetic field 
uh, is a lot more even, but it can be a lot more even because we're not compensating for part of the string that isn't magnetic anymore. If you run nickel, 100% nickel strings, nickel wound strings, maybe if you have a seven and a quarter inch radius, it's possible that you want to run uh, staggered pull pieces. So for the people that run that seven and a quarter radius with old school nickel strings, maybe. Here's the thing though, chances are you're not going to run a wound G, which means that chances are even if you do have all of these things kind of in place where you have a nickel wound set and you have your 10 to 46 strings and you have a seven and a quarter radius, chances are if you run a traditional staggered set of pickups, the G string is going to be really loud and out of balance. So. There you go. Most people in the 2020s don't need to run staggered pull pieces anymore. Uh, I'm sitting here editing this video right now and there's one thing I realized I forgot to mention. If you have staggered pull pieces and you want flat ones, do not beat them down with a hammer. I have seen people give this advice online to push them down or tap them down or something. Do not do that. Uh, here's why because you will do damage to the windings on the inside of the pickup against the magnets and ruin your pickup. Don't do it. And for those of you that get into the comments and say, oh, I did it 20 times and everything was fine. You were lucky. And it's like using steel wool to clean uh, pickup pull pieces or use steel wool on your fretboard. You may not immediately notice the difference or you may not immediately have a problem, but you will. So don't do that. Uh, I just wanted to mention that because it's one of those idiotic little pieces of advice that goes around on the internet. We don't even make them here uh, because the majority of our clients just want their guitar to sound good. Now, if you're really into like replicating the look of a vintage guitar um, and you're not playing it, you know, it's just to have, then maybe you would do that. But practically speaking, it's better to have flat top pull pieces these days because of the technology of the strings uh, and the technology of a flatter fretboard. There you go. My name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Talks Tone. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Do me a favor and uh, put in the comments below, what do you have in your guitar? Do you have staggered pull pieces or do you have flat tops in your single coil guitars? Very interesting, right? Uh, the other thing is make sure that you check out our live show on Thursdays uh, on YouTube's it's live it uh, we're doing it what 5 p.m. Eastern time now more people are able to watch I think is why it's really fun uh, you can go over to patreon.com and uh, ask questions and if you ask it out on patreon we 100% make sure that we cover that question uh, sometimes it gets crazy and I hate to miss your question if you really want it answered um, and yeah it's pretty awesome Thanks for hanging out. Uh, this has been Dilla Talks Tone from my new office in the front of my motorhome. This is where we get a lot of the video editing done and all that kind of stuff. And we're stuck in a driveway right now. You probably know why. Since it's the beginning of 2020. And if you don't, uh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> anyway, my name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon.